Riverside County Sheriff Chad Bianco was there, and tonight the sheriff is with me live. Sheriff Bianco, thank you so much for taking the time out of your very busy schedule, uh, and of course, our deepest condolences to you and the department. Thank you, Marla. I appreciate you having me on. Uh, I want to start with what today meant to you. What did it mean to you to be able to pay tribute soon after, so soon after the loss of your deputy? Yeah, it, it meant a lot to to me. It meant a lot to uh, the other deputies that are that are here with me. Aquas Fest is a is a show for that highlights all of the equestrian entries that are going to be in the Rose Parade. So, at a time when when we've been celebrating that in our 130th anniversary of our of our sheriff's department, we're going to be the first time ever we're going to be in the Rose Parade. Uh, it, it 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 ends like this, or it starts like this. And so there was a time. Uh, yesterday and last night that we thought that we would cancel this and that we would not show up today but uh, as a consensus we decided that that is certainly not what Isaiah would want and it is it, it, it would not be something to honor him if we just quit and so um, it, it meant a lot for us it was it was kind of sombering it was kind of humbling mm -hmm. uh, but it was it, I, I, I will say that uh, I don't think out of the 12 of us that were there, I don't think there was a dry eye. And as we were leaving, I don't think there were too many dry eyes in the, in the stand. So it was very emotional. It was very um, humbling for us that the support that we got from the Tournament of Roses staff, it, it, was, it was a good day. Mm -hmm. Well, we're so glad that you were able to carry on and no doubt is to your point that Deputy Cordero would want you to still take part in his name and honor. All right, let's talk about the suspect and the judge who made this decision, uh, not once but twice, essentially to put this criminal back on the streets. Last night, you had poignant, very strong words for the judge. You didn't name her. You were asked to name her. You didn't name her. Our reporting has identified her as San Bernardino County Judge Cara Hudson. I'm curious, what do you think the recourse for her should be? Now, there's probably a lot of different answers for that. I think that um, I think that it, it, what she should do is resign. She she's proving that she has absolutely no business in the position that she is. Uh, I will I will say that uh, for with with this suspect's past and the horrendous things that he has done, and the the proof where he has proven over and over and over that he should be locked up, and for her to let him out repeatedly, and then this happen. You can't tell me that something this heinous is the first time she has done that. There are many other suspects that are out there running free, victimizing the rest of us because she is not doing her job. She should quit. That's what should happen. But if she does not have the uh, integrity to do that, then I, I think that we should, we sh we, the citizens of San Bernardino should do something. And a recall to recall a judge is certainly something. It, it's unfortunate. Sometimes we... We don't pay attention to who we're electing as judges, and some people don't even know that judges are elected. Uh, they get in those positions for the most part. In, in this judge's case, she's a political appointee. Uh, that is what a lot of people don't understand, is judges are political appointees. Uh, like today, for instance, you, are, you will never see Governor Newsom appoint a conservative constitutional attorney to a judgeship in California. That is not going to happen with this governor. And so the judges are political. Once they get into office, it's very, very hard to get them out. They stay there until they want to leave because people really don't pay attention or care about their elections. And I think that this may draw attention for the future elections of who people are really voting for when they, when they vote for someone like this. Well, she was appointed, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, by former Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger. Right. Okay. Yeah, she was appointed in 2007. Mm -hmm. She was reelected last year, and she has a six-year term. So she's going to be in on that bench doing this same thing, protecting criminals for the next six, for the next six years unless we do something about it. Let's get your take on uh, reaction from the Cordero family. In particular, we heard from the uncle today who talked to our Chelsea Edwards and had this to say. I wish there came a time where motorcycles and the sheriff's department were done with. We don't live in the same society we lived 30, 40 years ago. We don't live in that society. We live in a society that there are people out there to literally kill you. 
maybe if he was in a patrol unit, and I'm not blaming anybody, but maybe if he was a patrol unit with a partner, that guy would have thought twice. What do you think of that? Had he been in a patrol unit, had he been with a partner, think that Deputy Cordero would be alive today? No, none of those things are true. And I, my heart breaks for the family. They have lost a, a, a tremendous, tremendous individual, a, a pillar of that family for sure. And they have lost him. So my heart breaks with them. And I don't want to uh, second guess anything they say or criticize anything they say, but the motorcycle had nothing to do with this. This was a person that was convicted of three strikes that should have been in prison knows he was going to prison for the next 25 years and he was going to do everything he could to stay out of prison which meant killing a deputy as he approached the vehicle whether he was in a car or a motorcycle he still would have had to approach the vehicle we have the body worn camera it was a it was a, a regular run of the mill traffic stop he walked up he was he was cordial it, it was a he was extremely nice and he was met by an evil evil criminal and it would not have mattered whether he had a partner whether he had someone with him or whether he was in a car so it, it doesn't have anything to do with motorcycles what he what he did say is we are in a different time we are we are in a time where we are coming across people with less and less respect for human life they are selfish they are emboldened by a criminal system that is failing and they have no respect for authority no respect no respect for you or me or for any of our belongings or really of, of our lives. Well, the outpouring of support for the pillar of the community, uh, Deputy Isaiah Cordero, has been incredible. And if you'd like to help, there's a way people can help. There is this helpahero.com campaign to raise money for him and his family. The Riverside Sheriff's Department has a link on their Facebook page. We have more information on our website as well, foxla.com. Riverside County Sheriff Chad Bianco, thank you so much. And again, we're so sorry for your loss. Thank you, Marla. We appreciate all of the support. It's been, it's been enormous from all across the country, uh, from our media partners and everything else. So we appreciate it, and I thank you very much. Well deserved, and happy New Year. Thank you.